Thanks for watching TechWiki. Click the subscribe button, then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. By now, you probably expect to be able to run software and services on lots of different platforms. Facebook works on your smartphone and on your PC. And you can watch Netflix on your 4K TV, your computer, or your tablet. But of course, supporting all of these different devices means more work for software developers, sometimes to the point where they won't even bother rewriting a program that you like for a different operating system, or if they do, it ends up being buggy and inferior, as we discussed in our episode on Windows, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, uh, I mean video game ports. But fear not, the ever merciful Microsoft has come to our rescue with its Universal Windows Platform, or UWP, an API that sits between the operating system and the program to make it much easier for developers to code programs just once for a number of different devices, even if they aren't using traditional x86 processors from Intel or AMD. That is, as long as those devices are running a Microsoft operating system. So UWP will work on Windows 10, the Xbox One, and HoloLens, if that thing ever makes it to market. So UWP achieves this by having a number of core APIs that work behind the scenes to allow code to be understood and executed properly across these devices. And it's also got some features that are more visible to you, the consumer at home like an ability to scale visual elements properly, depending on whether you're using an app on a large screen with a keyboard and mouse, or on a much smaller device with touch. And if a developer wants to add additional features that are only available on a certain platform, like uh, touchscreen toggles or keyboard and mouse support, he or she can use adaptive code that will only run if the UWP app is running on that type of device or even restrict the app to one platform. You see this actually with certain games that are only intended to run on Xbox for licensing reasons, or apps that are locked to touchscreen devices because their UI design requires it. But while Microsoft's rationale is that making UWP apps only available through the Windows Store allows them to screen them for improved user security, this move has opened the program up to a number of criticisms. One huge one is that this UWP plus Windows Store system is a walled garden, meaning that this platform that Microsoft is actively encouraging developers to code for originally could not be updated or even loaded outside of the Microsoft Store, making it a fairly closed ecosystem. This generated concern that Microsoft might be demanding too much control over what programs can and cannot be run on their devices and how they can be run. And although standard versions of Windows 10 obviously allow you to run compatible programs from any source, and Microsoft has updated Windows to allow loading of UWP apps directly from publishers without going through the Windows Store, Microsoft is still trying to find creative ways to encourage users to fulfill all of their software needs from the Windows Store, as with the stripped down Windows 10 S, which you can learn more about here, and the more recent S mode for regular Windows that prevents outside executables from being installed. In fact, the CEO of Epic Games wasn't shy about sharing his disdain for UWP, despite the fact that his studio produced Gears of War 4, a major UWP title. Speaking of gaming though, although UWP does have the benefit of allowing you to play the same game on both PC and Xbox without needing to buy it twice in many cases, enthusiasts have noticed that UWP has a tendency to lock down games in some ways, preventing them from being modded, working with multi-GPU setups, or even simply not managing to play nicely with frame counting programs, and these are just a few examples. So combine all of this with the fact that UWP is strictly for Microsoft operating systems and won't improve the seamlessness of your experience if you don't use an Xbox or a Windows phone, it isn't too surprising that it hasn't thrilled either its users or developers. Developers, 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 developers. 
Ting is the mobile carrier that is focused on customer service and satisfaction first. When you call Ting, you do not speak to a robot, you get put through directly to a person, and you don't pay extra for the privilege. With Ting, you pay only for what you use, and the average bill is just 23 bucks a month per device. If you're stuck in a contract and switch to Ting, they'll cover 25% of your cancellation fee, up to 75 bucks, and they've got lower mobile data rates than ever. It's now just $10 a gig beyond the second gig. So head over to techquickie.ting.com, we're going to have that link below, and try out their savings calculator to see just how much you'd save with Ting. And when you sign up using our link, you'll get 25 bucks in service credit or towards a new device. So thanks for watching guys, dislike, like, check out our other channels, leave a comment with a video suggestion, and subscribe!